In this episode, an AI that can control your PC all by itself, Sam Altman's five levels of artificial intelligence, Boston Dynamics teamed up with Toyota, and could Starship hit a shark? This and other news, right here, right now. Let's get it. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman recently shared his vision of five levels of artificial intelligence. The first is chatbots, like GPT, which we are kind of already used to, aren't we? The second level is reasoners, artificial intelligence that has human-level problem-solving skills, which Altman says includes OpenAI's latest O1 model. Number three is AI agents that people will be able to trust to perform individual tasks completely independently. Such an agent won't need to be told how to do anything. It will choose the best of everything on its own and make all the necessary arrangements. For example, it will be able to get you an airline ticket to Cancun at the best price, fill out all the details, and pay. The question is, would you trust it with your credit card? The fourth level of AI, according to Altman, is innovators, capable of coming up with new things on their own, while the fifth is organizations, basically full-fledged commercial and other entities that work virtually without human input. A few years ago, this one might have seemed unrealistic, but now it's pretty inevitable. And to prove it, Antropic has released its beta version of an autonomous AI agent capable of controlling your computer the way a human does. The model analyzes screenshots on the screen, decides what to do, moves the mouse, and types. This AI can look up stuff, but also put it on your calendar, answer an email for you, fill out your tax return on a website, and so on. So far, the AI isn't perfect. This is reflected in its speed and the fact that the agent doesn't yet know how to drag and drop. But the reason this novelty hasn't spread as wide as it seems it should is security. It's reported that until developers are convinced the model is shielded from hacking, only a limited number of researchers will be able to work with it. A similar model called Project Jarvis is being developed by Google, which will be part of the next version of Gemini. Jarvis will be able to automatically execute commands, interact with your browser, and in the future, with the OS. The bottom line is that in 5 to 10 years, we will no longer be sitting down at our computers for work. AI will do all the sitting for us. More on OpenAI. Turns out all the rumors about the launch of a new model called Orion in December are duds. Earlier, The Verge published news about the company's new AI model, which allegedly will be a hundred times more powerful than GPT-4. Interestingly, when refuting it, Altman did not specify whether the Orion project itself is a fake or not, only its launch date. Is he being a sneaky sneak or what? Here's what's not fake. ChatGPT got a do-over. Now the neural network can search the internet and answer questions directly in the context window. If you already tried this feature, let us know in the comments how GPT search compares to Google, or perplexity for that matter. Meanwhile, another OpenAI product, Whisper, seems to be in a pickle. It's a transcriber that translates voice to text and is often used in medical practice. Well, a group of researchers from Cornell University, the University of Washington et al. have recently analyzed Whisper and found that the AI hallucinates by entering fictitious and sometimes offensive information. Errors were found in 8 out of the 10 entries checked. At the same time, in 1% of the cases, the model simply hallucinates, spitting freestyles as if it was the real Slim Shady. We'll keep an ear out for Whisper and we'll give you a shout once we have updates. On to robots now. Kepler has seriously updated its robot and presented its second gen K2. According to the Chinese developer, the robot is designed for commercial use. It has 52 degrees of freedom, can turn its head and lift loads weighing up to 33 pounds or 15 kilos with its sensitive hands. Each finger ends in a sensor with 96 contact points. As for the robot's walkability, it's only reported that it's more stable and faster than K1. On a single charge, the new robot should run for up to 8 hours. 
Kepler reports that the humanoid's vision system and navigation software have been greatly improved as well. However, whether it's capable of navigating in unfamiliar environments on its own remains a question, but probably not. As for controls, unfortunately it comes only via an operator. And although there are statements of artificial intelligence, it's actually too early to tell. But look on the bright side, Kepler is already conducting tests in the field. Meanwhile, Fourier intelligence engineers have shared a new video of how they're teaching the GR2 robot to get off the floor. Here you can also see the robot working the dumbbells, but it looks like it needs some help. Quick, somebody call Goggins! And call us when the GR2 learns how to take out the garbage or iron a shirt or anything else that's useful for that matter. And UBTech has unveiled its new Walker S1 at a BYD factory. The humanoid robot is 5'8", or 172 centimeters tall, and weighs almost 170 pounds, or 76 kilos. It can carry boxes, handle a screwdriver, assemble, and sort through parts. And now, it's going to do it faster and better than humans. Here's the context. China is already experiencing a labor shortage, especially engineers and skilled workers. But while the ranks of engineers are annually replenished by university graduates, young people seem to be reluctant to become laborers. In total, the country's fast-growing automotive industry has already automated 70% of its operations thanks to industrial robots. And developers from UbiTech have calculated that 20% of the remaining 30 can be automated by humanoid robots, and only 10 would be left to humans. Most of it will be management and control. The new Walker S1 is designed to do just that. In addition to BYD, the company is also working with Donfang Motor, a joint venture between Fa Volkswagen and Geely. It's known that the company has already received an order of 500 robots from other car makers. Here's a question though, where does Tesla fit into all of this? Let us know in the comments what you think. And by the way, Unitree robots are also trying their hand at the Geely factory. The description to the video says this proves that H1 robots can be used to perform operations on a dynamic assembly line. But so far, they're not particularly good at it. Those special grippers and that accuracy is clearly lame. To save face, the company showed new capabilities of their G1 robot, the younger brother of H1, and also put their robot dog Go2 on two legs. And then they got a stick. What's the point, Unitree? Boston Dynamics, on the other hand, has made a monumental decision. It teamed up with Toyota Research Institute to find ways for the Atlas robot to be more useful. The goal is to make it understand how to act in the world around it without prompts from humans. And boy, have Toyota engineers been busy. For several years now, they've been developing the Large Behavior Model, LBM. This is an analog of the large language model only for robots. If LLM allows ChatGPT and Grok to form new texts out of millions of words and sentences, then LBM will allow robots to form a sequence of actions in a given place with given objects out of the training data. It's a task of incredible complexity, and while the Toyota Research Institute has already been able to train robots to cook meals on cue, it's still not the same. After all, it was just robotic arms, man. Here, however, the entire robot body will have to work in unison. Also, in the case of robot arms, the movements roughly corresponded to the capabilities of human operators. Atlas, on the other hand, got joints that rotate 360. This is a totally different ballgame. The Bostonians have already given us a glimpse into first results, for example, how the robot moves engine covers. Obviously, Toyota engineers did not limit their inputs to just data from operators. The team created a system that allows humans to control robotic arms through virtual glasses and haptic gloves to see and feel just what the robot does. They perform tasks in the kitchen, correcting errors and recording results. The robots then ran multiple simulations to improve their skills given different task conditions and desired outcomes. Now researchers don't just have robot hands, but one of the most advanced robots in the world. At least, that's what we hope. After all, we don't know much about the new Atlas. Obviously, it's not as fast or strong as its hydraulic ancestor, 
but Boston Dynamics' reputation leads us to believe it's going to be a good one. And despite the daunting task, we believe this team can finally revolutionize the development of universal humanoid robot technology. What do you guys think? Of course, the company doesn't forget about the show, dressing the robot up for Halloween. By the way, what did you go in as this year? To prove its autonomy, a human moves the second shelf and the robot puts a cover on it almost without any problems. Moving on, Robot Era decided that the Great Wall of China is not enough of a test bed for robots and sent them on a marathon into the Gobi Desert. For funs and giggles, one iron friend was given sneakers while the other was sent barefoot. By the way, this is a new model of the company's robot, which was named Star One. And although it runs kind of funny, it seems to work and helps the robot keep its balance. The better equipped robot started later, but managed to catch up with its barefoot opponent and then overtook it. Champ's max speed was 12 feet or 3.6 meters per second. According to the developers, the robots are able to instantly process information about their surroundings and adapt accordingly. Interestingly, robot era engineers also claim impressive intellectual abilities. Allegedly, Star Ones are able to learn new skills thanks to their proprietary AI. But we'll believe it when we see something other than funny running. And China's Xpeng Aeroc, a subsidiary of Xpeng, is building a factory for flying electric vehicles. The innovative enterprise will be located in Guangzhou of Guangdong province. Xpeng representatives emphasize that the plant will be a unique venture. And it's not just about the products. Chinese engineers have developed production lines capable of combining the high quality standards characteristic of aviation with the scale of car factories. The nearly 2 million square foot or 180,000 square meter facility will be operational as early as 2026 and will produce around 10,000 electric aircraft per year. Pre-sale already starts at the end of this year and will cost nearly 2 million yuan, which is approximately $290,000. Clearly, not for everybody, but the company already has a thousand pre-orders lined up. Not bragging, but we are the first to receive this news from the company directly. So subscribe to the channel to stay updated about all things Xpeng and others. Robots are becoming more and more versatile. For example, Mab Robotics made their four-legged robot Honey Badger waterproof, so it can follow you on land and down a river if you need it to for some reason. The robot is actually designed primarily for inspecting pipes and underground tunnels. Not only that, it can also handle tall grass and gravel. The robot is a foot and a half or 50 centimeters tall and weighs 26 pounds or 12 kilos. On top of the LiDAR, thermal imager and an RGB camera, the Badger can carry 4 pounds of additional equipment, like a value pack of Febreze for example. And Lynx Dynamics has unveiled its new dynamic robot Tron 1. It's a miniature copy of the ATST step counter from Star Wars Return of the Jedi, which is ready to storm any terrain right out of the box. You can buy it for a mere quote unquote $15,000. Tron 1 is designed for explorers since it's able to run on any terrain on three types of legs the spherical tips, then feet, kind of resembling human, and finally, wheels. In the forest, Tron 1 runs fastest on the tips. The second is ideal for research and the wheels show class on a flat road, but can also drive over obstacles. The robot stands at a bit less than 3 feet or 85 centimeters, weighs 44 pounds or 20 kilos, and can run for 2 hours on a single charge. Do you want one of these bad boys? On to Elon Musk now, who shared the most absurd demands of regulatory agencies that delay the testing of his dream project, Starship. You have no idea what kind of reports SpaceX is required to submit. For example, the company had to conduct studies on, quote, whether a rocket could hit a shark in the ocean on impact, end quote. 
When asked by SpaceX to provide data on sharks, they were refused, since the FAA seems to have the data, but the regulators themselves put little to no trust in them. When Musk's team managed to deal with the sharks, they got a new request, quote, What if the rocket falls underwater and explodes? Will whales get hearing damage? According to Elon himself, the likelihood of his rocket hitting a shark or a whale is certainly there, and that the shark or the whale would be very unlucky. But the probability of that precise bullseye is extremely low. Musk then pointed out that the solution to all such problems could be to turn the rocket underwater into a submarine. The entrepreneur said, quote, it would be an incredible feat in terms of physics, but we are incapable to do it, end quote. Incidentally, this is not the first time SpaceX has faced bureaucracy. In fact, the company is constantly researching how launching rockets affects birds, reptiles, fish, and the rest of the fauna. But despite the hassles, Musk presses on, and what's more important, there's progress. Yay or nay for Elon? Let us know in the comments. There's more, but we're out of time, so subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our Instagram for more from the world of high tech.